Issue Podcast. Welcome to another uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier end of the episode reaction slash quick discussion of the episode. Um, spoilers, uh, I'll play a little bit of the last few minutes of the episode and I recorded myself just kind of watching it. And then I got some uh, talking points about the episode, episode number two, which aired today in the morning. So if you're watching this, uh, spoilers ahead. Also remember that we're doing a giveaway. So I'll talk more about the giveaway towards the end of the video, but subscribe, like, comment. Uh, that's all you need to do to enter, but I'll, I'll go in more details. But let's go watch the reaction and then we'll come back here and talk a little bit about the episode. Good to see you again. Look. Okay. We divide ourselves, we don't It'll be interesting to see you working together. So what do you got? Well, the leader's name's Carly Morgenthau. We've been targeting civilians who've been helping Carly move from place to place. If you attack a location, you scramble the signal. But our satellites have found their symbol popping up in various displaced communities all across Central and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. We think that she's taking the medicine she just stole to one of these camps. Well, there are hundreds of those all over the planet since the blip, so I guess you'll have to look real hard. Good thing I got 20-20 vision then, huh? Where's she now, Walker? Do you know? No, we don't know, Bucky. But it's only a matter of time before we find out. Things are really intense for you, aren't they, Walker? Take it easy. Look, Walker's right. It is imperative that we find them and stop them. But you guys have rules of engagement and all kind of authorizations you have to get. Hmm. We're free agents. We're more flexible. So it wouldn't make sense for us to work with you. A word of advice, then. Stay the hell go. out of my way. So what are you thinking? Well, I know what we have to do. Uh, Isaiah said my people. Uh, don't take that to heart. That's not what he meant. No, he meant Hydra. Oh, Hydra. Hydra. Said my people. <sighs> not a chance. Walker doesn't have any leads. I know where you're going with this. And no, he knows all of Hydra's secrets. Don't you remember Siberia? So you're just going to go sit in a room with this guy? Oh, snap. Okay. E yes. Okay then. We're gonna go see Zemo. Ah. Uh, yes. I knew it. I knew they couldn't go more than two episodes of that one. It's two and two. There he is. Alright, well, that was uh, episode 2 of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I forget what it's called. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Star Sprangled Man. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, the synopsis for this episode, John Walker is named Captain America, Sam and Bucky team up against a rebel group, which we were introduced to the Flag Smashers on the first uh, episode. Uh, I'll just go through some notes that I took as I was watching the the episode. I will expand on one little aspect that I really want to dive into. And I'll probably, you know, when we do our full in-depth look back at the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode with uh, with Clay and uh, Kyle and, and Josh, uh, we'll go into all the details. But yeah, uh, I, I really like this episode. It's very interesting. They're introducing a lot of things. Especially towards the end, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, uh, I like the... We saw the scene that we've seen from the trailers where they drop down Bucky again. I think Steve was a bad example for these guys. Because they keep jumping out of airplanes without a parachute. At least Falcon has the wings. But Bucky just kind of uses his arm and his super soldier strength. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so... It's, it's very interesting. It's a good scene. I like the chemistry between... Uh, Mackie and Stan uh, and their respective characters um, Bucky called himself the White Wolf which is something we heard the kids call him in Wakanda it's also a name he's had in the comics I think 
I, I think going forward, because he doesn't want to be known as the Winter Soldier anymore, as we saw in the therapy, I think it's going to be pretty cool that he calls himself the White Wolf. Um, another thing, that sequence on top of the 18-wheelers was super dope. We saw a little bit in the trailer. What we didn't see was that John Walker and Lamar Hoskins, who is, you know, his cohort, pretty much his sidekick, kind of like Bucky was to Steve, uh, that they end up joining them in the battle against the Flag Smashers there. We're introduced to Carly Montague, the leader of the Flag Smashers, who is play. I don't remember the actress. Uh, I'll drop in a picture or something. Um, but she's very good. I think she was in Solo Star Wars movie. Uh, she was uh, uh, the character with the mask again. So uh, one, one sad thing, as these guys are super soldiers, uh, they, they destroyed Red Wing, which is pretty sad for everyone, I think, except for Bucky. Uh, another thing I noticed, I, I like watching the show with the captions to make sure I don't miss you know, any, any of the dialogue. Uh, I don't like that for John Walker, they are using, when he's off screen, they address him as Captain America in the, clap, in the captions, which I don't appreciate. Uh, I think they should, they should do John Walker, but that's just me. Uh, once again, like I said, they, they have a conversation after the battle. Uh, Lamar Hoskins is a character from the comics whose uh, name is Battlestar, which is a nickname he uses here in the episode. Uh, Battlestar, also another Star Spangled Hero with a shield, very similar to Captain America. Uh, like I said, Carly Montague, the character, is the leader of the Flag Smashers. Uh, she's, I, I like her a lot. I like her in this uh, role of the leader of the Rebellion. Um, very similar to the motivations, I guess, from the solo character too. Uh, but who who is behind all these texts, and who is the other the other entity following the Flag Smashers? That's a that's one question I have. Uh, I know they mentioned the power broker, which in the comics is somebody that literally brokers powers to people. So like he'll give people powers. He may be behind. He may be behind the, uh, like, giving these people their enhancements, their super soldier serum or whatever. So we'll, we'll have to, like, it just kind of wait to see more of that. Let's see. Uh, one of the biggest, and I think maybe the most important part to me of this episode, was the introduction of Isaiah Bradley. Now, for those of you guys that have are not familiar with the comics, Isaiah Bradley... Uh, he was the first Captain America, the original Captain America. In in the in this book, uh, a truth, um, they they expand on the history of Isaiah Bradley, and how the government was actually testing out the super soldiers there on, on black soldiers, and and Isaiah Bradley was the one that kind of survived those experiments and went forward carrying on the mantle of Captain America. Uh, this comic book was written by Robert Morales and art by Kyle Baker. Uh, if if you have not read this book, I highly, highly recommend it. Isaiah Bradley's, uh, I believe is his grandson, goes on to become Patriot, if I'm not mistaken, in the comics. Uh, part of the Young Avengers. So there is a whole, a whole legacy um, of, of, you know of Captain America being African American, which I think I'm, I'm really glad they're introducing because we, this is kind of the same struggle Sam's having of like, should he have the mantle of Captain America being somebody, a person of color? Um, I like the, 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 I like that Sam is upset that he didn't know about Isaiah's origins because I feel like this is something that was important to him and it could help them come up with the decision whether to carry on the ca the Captain America mantle. Uh, so I hope we see more of Isaiah. I think, you know, unfortunately, he he only met Bucky under bad circumstances when he was working for Hydra as the Winter Soldier. Um, but uh, I'm excited to see how that story plays out going forward. I hope it's not just a nod to the comics, but I hope they actually expand on, on, on this whole Isaiah Bradley idea. Uh, because I do, I do hope 
by the end of the series, Sam takes up the mantle of Captain America. Um, okay, and then the last bit of it, we get the the therapy session with with Bucky and Sam. Um, it feels like I don't understand the role in the government. I think that's a little bit more convoluted since they are superheroes, but like the accords are in place. I don't know. It's weird. I'm not going to question it too much because then it'll just kind of, you know, like John Walker mentions in the conversation they have with them, like, we have to abide by government rules. But so does that mean that Bucky and Sam are kind of like free to do whatever they want because they are Avengers? Uh, so we'll see. Uh, and then when you get to the last part of it, like I said, somebody's chasing the Flag Smashers and that was pretty intense. Uh, I won't go too much into that because that's just really an action piece. And then the last thing, the big reveal at the end, which we saw, uh, we finally we finally figured out where Baron Zemo is. I mean, we knew he was in jail, but I think because Isaiah addressed Bucky as a Hydra agent, I think Bucky now feels the need to start there digging for answers of how these Flag Smashers are getting their powers. So uh, I love Daniel Brule in the role of Zemo. I'm glad he's coming back. I wonder how he's going to escape. Probably a lot of these events are going to trigger his escape because it looks like he's just been in prison all this whole time. I wonder if he got blipped. Because my original theory was that he escaped because of the blip. Like security was way down at the whatever prison he was at. Or maybe he got blipped and when he came back he wasn't in prison anymore. Um, so I don't know. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it once again. Go read this. It's a very cool book. Really cool. Um, it's it's a uh, it's it's called the Marvel Must Have for a reason. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know if you have any theories or comments down below. I hope you guys are enjoying these. I enjoy making them in the morning on on Fridays. Um, like, subscribe, comment, uh, and remember we are doing our giveaway for one free month of HBO Max. Uh, so any once we hit 100 subscribers on the channel, which we are getting so much closer than I ever thought. So thank you to everyone that subscribed. Uh, yeah, once that happens, we'll pick somebody that's commented on a video starting from March 15 forward. So anybody that's commented there, we'll pick somebody at random. You'll get a free month of HBO Max, which you can use to watch Godzilla next week, Mortal Kombat in April. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is on there, both the regular and the black and white version. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.